Hi there, and welcome back to In Between Two Saguaros. I'm your host, Sir William. <laughs> What's happening? It's Will, aka Sir William, and today's video is going to be a little different than what I normally do. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to go check out some of my other videos. I do some pretty cool stuff. I've been overlanding across the United States in Apple, my 2015 Toyota 4Runner, for the past seven years now. For the past two years, I've been doing it full time. And normally, I make videos that show you how to get out and go explore the world around you without all kinds of cool gadgets and gizmos and all the different things that you see on a lot of different channels. That being said, there is some stuff that I use on a pretty regular basis, if not daily, most of which you can get on Amazon, and I wanted to share those things with you. Plus, it's around the holidays, and your boy needs a little bit of money. So with the affiliate links that I'll leave down in the description to all these things, I do get paid a small commission that's not charged to you guys. And, well, like I said, it's the holidays. Beer's done gone up. Gas has skyrocketed. So your boy could use a little bit of help and, you know, it's better than holding up a cardboard box somewhere. Now, all the products that I'm going to talk about today are products that I've actually used, and I'm not being paid by the company to promote these products. Again, I'm affiliated with Amazon, but that's a totally different thing. So, know that these are products that I've actually used, I've actually got experience with, and I actually do recommend. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is shelter. And while I spend most of the nights inside of Apple, my 4Runner, I do occasionally camp in a tent, and I've got a couple different tent recommendations. For small tent, I recommend the Coleman Sundome. My wife and I refer to this as little tent, and this tent is big enough for four people. It's fit my wife and I and two dogs rather snugly, and it's the Coleman Sundome four-person tent. I've had it since 2016, and it's still going strong. It's a it's a go-to tent if I just need a quick small uh, tent that's not going to take up a whole lot of space. The downfall to the Sun Dome is the fact that you can't stand up in it and it is rather small. So if you're looking for a larger tent to fit more people in or you just want some standing room, I recommend the Gazelle T4 Hub Tent. They make two different styles. They make the Gazelle T4 Hub Tent and then the Gazelle T4 Overland Edition. In my opinion, the Overland Edition is worth the extra money because you do get some upgraded things like a floor print uh, as well as some upgraded stakes and a better carrying case. The main thing about the Gazelle T4 hub tent is how quick it is to set up. It's extremely easy to set up. I want to say it takes less than 90 seconds to get it out of the bag completely set up, rain fly and everything and the hub design allows you just to pull it out and pop it back in whenever you're done. It goes back in its carrying case extremely easy. It's just overall a really good tent. I haven't had any problems in the wind, no problems with the rain, nothing like that like i said it's a really good tent i highly recommend the gazelle t4 hub tent either of the gazelle tents are going to be good but again the overland edition is worth the extra money the only drawback to the gazelle tent is the fact that it packs down rather long and it takes up a good amount of space but if you need the extra space and you want a good tent the gazelle t4 hub tent is a good one while we're on the shelter topic let's talk about these uh, little screen things that i have around the door of apple these are just simply little socks that go around the window and I put these over the window and then roll the window down and it keeps all the flies and the bugs and mosquitoes and different things like that out of the truck while I'm camping in the back of it. These are super inexpensive and they come in clutch, man. I, I use these all the time. If you notice right now, there's bugs flying all around me. Those will not be in the back of Apple because I have these nets. So highly recommend these. Next, let's talk about bedding. And as far as bedding, the things that I use that I can get from Amazon, first and foremost is this Thermarest sleeping pad. This Thermarest Base Camp sleeping pad, it's rather expensive, but it's made in America and I haven't had any problems with it. So throughout the years, I've used a couple different sleeping pads. I've used the $40 pad and I end up having to buy three of those $40 pads, which is, if you do the math, $120 versus this $180 pad. So I've learned throughout the years that trying to save a nickel usually ends up costing me a dime. This is a primary example of that. Had I just gone with this thermo rest from the get-go, then I would have been much happier. I did poke a hole in it, but they do have a patch kit that works really well with the thermo rest that you can get, and that's what I did, and it holds there just fine. But the thermo rest base camp is an awesome sleeping pad, again, made in America, and even though it's a little bit higher than some of the other sleeping pads, it's definitely worth it, in my opinion, as I don't have any issues with it other than the ones that I caused myself. 
Next from there, I'm gonna go to the most comfortable sleeping setup that I've ever had, which is this four inch memory foam folding mattress. I used this uh, in one of the previous setups that I had in Apple, and to be completely honest, I'm probably gonna end up going back to this setup just as soon as I can get my hands back on this four inch folding memory foam. This thing is really nice. It's super comfortable and provides an, a great night's sleep. The only issue that I have with it is the fact that it packs down rather large which is the reason that I don't have it now. I've since traded it for the uh, Go-Cot, which is, again, made in America, but you cannot get that on Amazon. I'll still leave a link down in the description below as the Go-Cot is probably my second favorite uh, sleeping setup in the back of the Forerunner. The order of most comfortable would be the 4-inch memory foam foldable mattress, the Go-Cot with the sleeping pad on top of it, and then the sleeping pad on top of another Z-Fold style sleep and pack. All right, so the next segment is going to be the cooking segment. I'm going to start the cooking segment out by talking about my fridge. I run an IceCo VL45 Pro. I've been using IceCo fridges for the past five years, and I really like them. I've had great luck with them. I've used multiple different ones. The 45 liter is the perfect size, in my opinion, for myself and myself and my wife. However, if you've got a bigger family, you might want to opt for something like the 60 liter, or if you want something really big, you can get dual zone. They go all the way up to 95. Again, I use the VL45 Pro. The cool thing about the VL45 Pro is the fact that the lid opens both ways as well as comes completely off. The drawback to that, though, is that the latches are a little bit loose and can sometimes, one, not latch properly, and two, it tends to rattle around a little bit. So you have to double check it to make sure that it's latched properly. And as far as rattling around, I'm still looking for a solution. If you're not interested in having it rattling around and you don't care about it opening both ways or the top coming completely off then I recommend looking at the standard VL45 that's the fridge that I ran before this and it's a great fridge again it's 45 liters the latching system is a whole lot better it's more sturdy and tighter and I think it might actually be just a tad bit more efficient too probably because it latches better at any rate I don't think you can go wrong no matter which ice cove fridge that you choose as they have all treated me well so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Camp Chef Everest 2. I've had the Camp Chef Mountain Series, the all aluminum one, big silver guy, and I really liked it. Although I did not like the fit and finish of it. This Everest 2 has the same burners as that, and that's what I was truly interested in. The burners are 20,000 BTUs each, which means the entire stove is 40,000 BTUs, opposed to normal camp stoves are only 20,000 BTUs total. So this has got more power. Power. Also, this has really, really good flame control, which to me is the game changer with this specific stove. So highly recommend the Camp Chef Everest 2. It's a fantastic stove. It's built really well, and it has great flame control. To power the Camp Chef Everest 2, I have a five-pound propane tank that I got off of Amazon. Having a five-pound propane tank is an absolute game changer. I never have to worry about those little green bottles. Also, it's a whole lot cheaper. This only holds a little over a gallon worth of propane which is normally only like four dollars a gallon so it's relatively cheap in comparison to those little uh, green things that you have to constantly throw away now you're going to want to get a adapter hose in order to use the big propane tank but i highly recommend this five pound propane tank Next on the list in cooking is my Lodge cast iron, and I use cast iron for absolute everything. Not only is it just good sturdy cookware, but it's also safer than some of the other options out there. So I really enjoy the cast iron. I carry a 10 inch and I carry a five inch. Both have been in my family for a really long time. The five inch is actually from like the 1940s or 1950s, so it's very well seasoned. They do have a combo cooker that is a really good system if you don't already have some cast iron, but at any rate cast iron pans are the way to go now sometimes i need some pots out on the road and my absolute favorite whenever it comes to pots is this stand sport nesting pot system I looked up and down for a really good stainless steel because I didn't want any of the chemicals uh, nonstick or anything like that. So I wanted stainless steel, and this is a really nice, inexpensive option, and it comes with all kinds of different size pots, and it actually comes with um, a big pot and also a uh, little pan thing too, but I don't have those with me as I have those two cast irons, so I don't really need them. But 
at any rate, the Stansport nesting pot system is a phenomenal piece of kit, and I highly recommend it. Next is the Plano box. I use a medium-sized Plano box. I keep everything that I'm going to be cooking with inside the Plano box. I also keep canned goods in there. So Plano box is just a really nice, good, inexpensive box that's also made in America, and you can't go wrong there. So Plano box, you can get it on Amazon, or you can get it at your local sporting goods stores. I recommend checking in store first, as sometimes the shipping makes it on Amazon a little bit higher than what it is already in the store. So check out your local store, but you can still get it on Amazon as well. One last thing when it comes to cooking. My percolator, I've had this percolator since the very beginning and it is held up to everything. The only thing that's broken is this little glass top, which you can buy a new one for four bucks. I really, really enjoy this percolator. It's nine cups of coffee and it's super easy to use and doesn't require a whole bunch of extra cleaning or anything or any extra tools. You know, when you use a French press, you gotta have something to boil the water and then you gotta have the French press itself. And also you gotta make sure that you buy the right style coffee so that way it doesn't clog up the French press and then whenever you're done the French press has got all the grounds down at the bottom which sometimes can be a little bit of a hassle to get out. This percolator has all the grounds up top whenever I'm done I pour out the coffee I empty out the grounds and then I'm ready to go. There's a couple companies out there that private label this same percolator at any rate I'll find the one that I got and put it down below. I'm going to try to hurry up the rest of the video because I'm running out of sunlight over here and I'll show you guys the sunset here in just a minute because it's absolutely gorgeous. But the next category is going to be hydration and water. Now this category is a bit tricky and it's got a couple different components. First I want to start out by saying I have tried my hardest to not spend a lot of money in this category. I've bought numerous of those blue Reliance jugs and every single one of them get a hole in them they leak or they just overall they don't do real good at, over time so I'll either wear a hole in them poke a hole in them they break whenever I try to strap them down so I've had bad luck with those and the reason that I would buy those is because I wanted to save money and not spend a hundred bucks on a good solid five gallon jug well after you spend, you know, $20 five times and you're already there, which I've done throughout the year. So finally I broke down and I got a good jug, which is the Scepter, 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 or so, whatever, however you want it. Anyway, I recommend it. It's this brown jug here. I got this particular one from a subscriber that hooked a brother up, so I do appreciate it. But if you were going to buy a water jug, just go ahead, cry once, buy once on this Skepter Scepter, however you want to say it, the brown, big, heavy-duty, military-style jug. It works out great, super strong. It's like bomb-proof. The next jug that I have was given to me to test out. It is the Dometic uh, Go jug, and this jug is super nice. It's super sturdy, BP free the whole nine yards again it's really strong you don't have to worry about it getting a hole in it or anything like that however it only holds three gallons is the only downfall to that but what I do like about it is the fact that you can use this little faucet with it and this faucet comes separate so you can buy this faucet and you can actually use this faucet on the scepter or scepter or any other water jug that you have by simply dropping the hose down there there's also ways that you can make some of these other like uh um, off-brand faucets from Amazon fit onto this water jug. You'll have to do a little bit of research, but I really like this particular faucet because it's magnetic base and the hose goes into the back here, which is something that you don't see on pretty much all the other off-brand uh, faucets that are a lot cheaper. This one is a bit high, but it has saved a lot of water usage over the past few months that I've had it. So I do like having that faucet there. Whether or not you get this faucet or another faucet, a faucet is a game changer. This faucet's worked really well. Again, I've had it for about four months. I've charged it twice, so it holds battery. It's, I mean, it's just a, it's a good piece. So highly recommend it. The next segment is recovery and safety. And I'm going to start this segment off by talking about action tracks. I carry four action tracks, two 
of which have the metal studs in them and two are just the standards. Action tracks are made here in America. They're five times stronger than anything else out on the market. The real key to their success is the material that they use. The material that they use provides more flexibility, which means that you can use it with heavier weights than anything else out on the market. Also, there's zero embrittlement in real cold weather, which tends to be the weak spot for others on the market. So US Action Tracks, I highly recommend them. They're great pieces, again, made in the United States. They have a five year, no questions, no use restriction warranty. If you have any problems, then contact them and they'll send you another board. The other piece of equipment that I carry whenever it comes to recovery is a Rhino USA uh, tow rope. Now this particular rope is not to be used as a kinetic snatch rope. This is simply just a tow rope and what that is is just something to give you a, a pull. So if you're looking to you know back up and really jerk something, this is not that. This is simply just a tow rope but it does come in handy for sticky situations where all you might need is just a tug and I got it on Amazon relatively inexpensive not made in the USA even though you would think that it is based on the name it is not however it's still a good piece of kit for the money and I've used it quite a few times with zero issues so Highly recommend that. Next piece of safety equipment I have is this first aid kit. I've had this first aid kit for quite some time. I've used quite a bit of components out of it. I've also restocked it with other components. Uh, some of the key times that I've used it is uh, to remove ticks. I've used it for the medicine in there, Benadryl, different things like that, as well as aspirin and um, alcohol swabs. I've been bit by a dog while I was on one of the adventures that I was on, and this kit really, really uh, was worth its weight in gold during that particular time because I was able to field dress my wounds and keep them from getting uh, any worse than they already were. So you're definitely going to want a first aid kit and I would venture to say this should be the very first thing that you add to your vehicle, it, whether or not it's an overland vehicle or just a regular vehicle. It's good to have a first aid kit. This particular one is a two person. Uh, a first aid kit is only as good as the person using it. What I mean by that is if you go and you equip yourself with a crazy first first aid kit with all kinds of different tools and all kinds of different dressings and different things like that but yet you don't know how to use them then it's completely pointless so get something that is going to be able to be used by you and don't get any more than that unless you plan on taking some safety classes or becoming like a certified nurse or perhaps you already are a nurse I don't know at any rate get a first aid kit also, when talking about recovery and safety, I cannot recommend enough having some sort of a jump starter. I use the Wagon Tech V10 Boost, and not only is it good to start up the truck with a dead battery, but it also helps power up my other electronics like my phone, and right now it's currently powering up the cameras. Highly recommend some sort of jump box. I use the Wagon Tech V10 Boost, and it works great. It's worked on my truck, it's worked on a Tundra, and it's also even worked on a V10. 10 Ford so it's strong. I almost forgot one of my favorite Amazon finds which are these lights right here. These lights are magnetic on the back. They also have a hoop. They've got a standard kind of diffused light. They've got a spotlight which is real nice and then they also have a red light which is real good. Each of the lights have about three different settings and then they have an SOS mode where you know, if you were out in the middle of the woods and you wanted to send for help, you could do that with this light. This light, whenever I got it, I got two of them, well, three of them, and whenever I got these lights, they were only like nine bucks on Amazon. They've since gone up in price, uh, but I still think that they're worth it. I think they're about 18 bucks a piece at this point. Uh, they're still worth it. Anything more than $20, I wouldn't say that they're worth it, uh, but they are still worth it. Now, they've got two different ones. You've got this one, which is 4,000 milliamp hours, and the reason I got it is because you're supposed to be able to charge up your phone with this. Uh, however, I've never been able to get that to work on any of the lights. But the 4,000 milliamp hour makes it to where I don't have to charge these things real frequently. I'd say they probably last a full month. I mean, they last, they last a really good time. Even this one Last night it was on all night long and I've still got three uh, three bars left here of battery. So these are really good. They do make a smaller one uh, that has a smaller battery and it doesn't have that little piece where, you know, that doesn't work that charges up your phone. So yeah, as a bonus, I'm going to throw in one more thing. 
Okay, two more things. First and foremost is gonna be my one bag. I am a minimalist by definition, and I have worked for years to try to downsize all of my belongings to where they fit in one TSA carry bag. I've also tried to find a good, solid, inexpensive bag to uh, fit the bill and this particular one I've been using for almost a year now and it's worked out great. I use this bag all day every day it's tsa compliant all of my things fit in here um, the way that i've made them fit in here is through some travel cubes i'll go ahead and leave those links down there too but at any rate this one bag it was super inexpensive and i fit everything into it and it's just it's a good bag it's nothing real special i think they consider it a tactical backpack which i like the little velcro up here as you can see i've added my own little label here and this label is cool because uh, the folks at tsa don't really care to go through this bag when they see it go through the conveyor belt but at any rate that's my one bag one more bonus i'll talk about is my phone mount system i am a man of magnets as my buddy huey likes to say i love the idea of magnetized things because magnets just work so well and skosh magic mount is my mount of choice i have one mounted on the pillar in the back so that way i can stick my phone up there and watch tv whenever i'm lounging in the back of the forerunner and and then I also have one here on the front of the dash, and this is what I use to mount the phone whenever I need to use the GPS or even sometimes record some videos as I'm going down the trail. And so. last but not least, my rock crawler. This is my Axial SCX24. It's a 24 scale rock crawler. This particular one has been upgraded with a whole bunch of different parts and components that you can also get from Amazon and a few modifications that I've made to it. This thing will make you a better off-roader guaranteed it's really cool to be able to just pull up to camp pull this thing out and then start rock crawling i highly recommend you get one as i said it will make you a better off-roader it's hard to believe that at 24 scale everything like line choice grip warming up the tires different things like that translates but it definitely does all right well that's gonna wrap up this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it i really appreciate you guys watching i'd appreciate it even more if you bought some stuff using those links down in the description because as I said, I do get paid a small commission that is not charged to you and it does help put some beer in my belly and gas in the tank. So I really appreciate it. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like it. And until next time, you guys keep hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit. And remember, you can be happy if you've a mind to. Peace, y'all.